You know what it's like. You're lying on a beach, you're tanned, you're feeling good, you're sipping ouzo, watching the sun come down. Then all of a sudden, just out of the corner of your eye, you see Michelle Pfeiffer walk up, and she's wearing this little sort of skimpy top thing, and she walks straight up, up to you, and then she starts unbuttoning it, and you know she's got nothing on underneath. And just as she gets to the last button, you hear her say, time gentlemen, ladies and gentlemen, please, and then you have to leave the pub. Isn't that shocking? My guest tonight is going to tell me all about things like that. His name is Brendan O'Callaghan, he's a dream interpreter, and he's tonight's best guest. And introducing our best guest. Brendan, you're very welcome. So why does Michelle Pfeiffer never take her clothes off? Well, the basis of all dreams is the fact that there are bad things you're trying to avoid. So in the content of that, you're trying to avoid that particular situation. That's shocking. That's, <laughs> that's very disappointing, I must say. <laughs> Maybe it goes back to your producer. But however, <laughs> uh, it's interesting that, that the uh, content of all dreams yeah. are, are to bring you forward, not to uh, stop you anywhere. So the fact that the dream stops means that you continue on. So somewhere uh, in your psyche, you're going to have to work out what that problem is that you're having that's causing Michelle Pfeiffer to that's stop at that particular crucial moment for you. God. Oh, I am sick, but not in the way I thought. Really. <laughs> yeah. um, so anyway, let's, let's kind of start at the beginning. How did you become a dream interpreter? Do you train to do that sort of thing? Uh, basically, the reason why I became dream interpreter is that my training as a clairvoyant required me to be able to understand what the symbolism was that I was dealing with. And like anything, if you want to study Italian so that you can understand the Italians or French so you can understand the French, if you understand the content of dreams, the, the language of symbols, then you can understand a language that's used by spirit to communicate. Uh, the whole thing about dreams is that they come from an, another state of consciousness. They reckon there's about 15, 16 different levels of consciousness that we can uh, draw information from to help us work through this physical consciousness that we're involved in. But because of our reluctance to accept uh, the facts of life from a spiritual basis, they have to wait until we're asleep before they can feed in this information to us. And we have these strange dreams that when we uh, understand the symbolism involved in them, we can begin to uh, change our lifestyle, can change your way of understanding how we should operate and basically improve our life as a consequence of it. So you're saying in a way that the dreams are actually forms of communication from other levels of consciousness rather than in necessarily internal to ourselves? Yes, but there are levels of consciousness. We have many levels of consciousness. You know you'd be having a conversation with somebody and halfway through the conversation there's another thought cuts across your mind and you say, what was that? And then you can't locate it and you continue on your conversation. Mm -hmm. Then there are other times where a sudden thought would cut across your mind and you locate it and you wonder what it, why that came in. I wasn't talking about anything to do with that. It's another level of consciousness short circling back onto this level of consciousness. Mm -hmm. And uh, if you can understand the way dreams work, is that uh, it's only because of the fact that we need to sleep to be intruded upon by our dreams that we can, in fact, if we develop an understanding of, of uh, our dream quality, we can bring it into an everyday sense or either symbols that are presenting to us in a waking state. So if your car gets stolen, your car gets towed away, or anything like that happens in your life, you can understand it uh, on another level. I w I w how many levels of consciousness are people necessarily aware of? Like, you know, a fast trainee presenter like me, I'm just okay. kind of aware of kind of awake, asleep, and drunk, basically. Well, yeah, just fast trainee like yourself would, would be, um, you're able to um, interpret on this level, you're able to be on a conscious level. But at the same time as I'm talking to you, you're thinking of your next question. So you're using, right another, I am, yeah. <laughs> you're using <laughs> another, level of, another level of consciousness. And uh, further still, that you're also wondering, pre trying to preempt the, the answer I might give so that you can follow it. So there's another level in there as well. So uh, what we can actually access at simultaneous time might be two or three levels at the most. Uh, when I'm doing clairvoyant readings, it might be accessing the whole, the whole she bang lot of them because I can hear what I'm saying. Uh, it can be saying something different to what I'm thinking, and I can be also taking notice of so many other things happening at the same time through my other senses as well. The, the, what you were saying there about the symbolism of dreams, and this mm. is like a, a, a complete language in itself. Is, Total is language what you're saying. Itself, yeah. Is it the same for everybody in all cultures? It is, because uh, let's say, for example, that everybody speaks Italian. It's the same to everybody who speaks Italian. Everybody speaks French. It's the same to them all who speak French. But uh, symbols are universal language. So uh, if the whole world understands symbols, they all speak in the same language. The whole world understands French, they all understand French. So yes, it is the same, no matter what mm. the culture is. Mm. But you, you do get speech, though, in, in dreams as well. People say things to each other. But only to, to colour the content. Mm. Okay. Very often you, you remember the instant of the dream, not so much the, the content, uh, the verbal content of the dream. So you look into a dream and see where it takes place. Um, and where it takes place indicates the level that you've got to start interpreting it on. 
Okay, well, I'll, I'll just put you on the spot here. I'll tell you about a dream I had. Okay. This is a dream I had about 10... Well, actually, it's, it's, it's a couple of dreams I had. Mm. This is about 10 years ago, when I was even more poverty-stricken than I am now. <laughs> yeah. And uh, <coughs> I dreamed... The first dream I had, I dreamed that I was flying. I wasn't in a plane. Mm. I was just kind of coasting around the place. Um, and then the next dream I had, uh, I was doing the same thing. And then I'll, I said, all of a sudden, hang on, I'm dreaming. This is fantastic. So I was kind of swooping and curving and having a fabulous mm. time. And then after a while, I got a bit frightened by it. So I decided I'd land and have a bit of a rest. And then I couldn't take off again. Mm. And that's all I remember of the dream. What's OK, well, there's a couple of levels you can look at that one. Uh, flying in a dream is always a good symbol to have because it is uh, reaching up for your aspirations and very often for the spiritual aspirations. In your dreams, you... you uh, reaching very high on many occasions. Again, remember that you had to escape through sleep to get to there. Uh, and when you became aware of the fact that you were dreaming, you brought that dream into reality for yourself and you began to uh, bring in a, an analytical side of your consciousness to look and see what you were aspiring to um, on a spiritual level. That brought you down to earth eventually. And uh, again, it could be also looked at as being rebirthing as well, the fact that you had come down to start off your physical life. You had come from a spirit state into a physical state. And I feel that in that particular dream, without knowing more of the content, that this, in fact, is what it was. It was to plonk you firmly on the ground and say, right, put your feet there, and you're going to stay there for the duration of your life. Oh, my God, that's a horrendous thought. I think they were going to cut off my dole at the time or something. Like <laughs> well, like it's, it's a lovely thought because <laughs> you wouldn't like to leave it before your, your end. <laughs> yeah, indeed. Can you, could you actually train yourself to do that? Uh, could you do this, in fact? If, if you're having a dream, can you train yourself into, this, into the state where you always are aware that you're having a dream, if you know what I mean, that you uh, bring in other levels? OK, yeah, that, that's an easy thing. It's meditation does that. The symbolism of meditation is the very same as symbolism of dreams. It's the same language. It's the same uh, connection. As I say, that when I'm doing a, a clairvoyant reading with somebody, I'm looking at a load of symbols being fed in. I'm spontaneously uh, translating those symbols into our language. And sometimes that the symbol is so intense that, and so complicated that you have to tell a little story around it to try and explain it. In other words, like a parable to, to uh, untangle the intricacy of that particular symbol. Uh, it's rather like two of the astrology, if you've ever heard two astrologers talking, it's a different language altogether. And they will say something about a certain planet being in a certain house, and that means volumes to an astrologer. But if we were to try and put into words, you've got to write pays and pays and pays and pays of what that actually means. So the same with the understanding of dream symbols. You, you start to unfold your life to a, a dream interpreter, where you turn around and say, well, I had this dream, and you start to talk about things, and the dream interpreter says, oh, yes. Okay, and you say, what's, what's, what's it all about? And it's strange what can actually come out. And as I say, that usually the content of dreams uh, is such that you uh, do need to have a third party to investigate them for you because if it's something you're trying to avoid, it's something that, that you will uh, also try and avoid in your translation. So when you're meditating, this, you give yourself the same opportunity. You alter a very relaxed state. You park your body, you park your mind, you park your body. And I'm not talking about TM or those forms of meditation. I'm talking about simple spiritual meditation. And in flood the symbols into your dream. Now, if you use guided visualization, the, the visualization takes you into the opportunity of the experience of a symbol. Mm -hmm. In other words, that you might be uh, brought along a country lane, and in the middle of the country lane, you suddenly see there's a big oak tree, and there's this thing coming in on top of you. And you begin to bring in your own symbols into your meditation. Yeah. And when you sit down and interpret that, wow, the whole thing begins to unfold of what the next step in your life should be. OK, Brendan, thanks very much for that. Thank you so very much. If you, uh, want to get Michelle Pfeiffer to get her kit off, Brendan might be able to sort it out for you if you're lucky. Anyway, many